The, the output of this circuit is probably not all that useful for us because it's going to, when you push the, the button in, it's going to have a little bit of delay and then this output's going to go um, constantly high until you release the button and then there'll be a certain amount of time that it's going to wait for the zeros to propagate through and then it'll go back low. So I want to also introduce the edge detector which is very important if you have a very fast clock but you want to do things like count push button pulses accurately. So from the output of that circuit you feed it into another flip-flop that's clocked at the system clock. It doesn't have the, this enable signal which is enabling at a very slow rate. It, it's running at the system clock frequency. So here's the input. It goes high for a real long time, you know, indefinite. We don't know how long, but we're only worrying about, for instance, the rising edge of this transition the first time you push the button, and hold, or at the instant you push the button, and you don't care how long you hold it. So what this circuit does is it generates a little pulse that you can send into your logic to do something like counting or trigger an event. And the way you do this is when this node goes to 1 and this one is sitting at 0, we have an inverter here which inverts the 0 to a 1. This is an instance where there's a rising edge transition that's happening and what will come out since we have an AND gate again, you'll end up with a pulse that comes out for one clock cycle. Now on the next clock cycle, if this remains to be one, um, this would become one. This inverter, which would changes its value on its output to a zero, so now we evaluate the AND gate and it says, no, this is not two ones going into this AND gate, so it goes back to zero for an indefinite amount of time. Now, sometimes it's important to look for the falling edge of a signal. And you're going to use this type of circuit all over your designs. You're going to have things generated and you're going to care about the rising or the falling edge of it. So by moving this inverter, so if you make a direct connection here, and you move the inverter, to the node that's before the flip-flop, now the way it's going to evaluate out is you're going to get a pulse when the input signal drops. Okay, so for you guys that have been following before, you'll recognize the clocked process, the always block. This is Verilog that I'm using in this example. So always at the positive edge of clock. So every time the clock rises, I'm going to do something. It's going to make a flip-flop. I've also added something new this week. On the negative edge, so it says or negative edge, reset. So I've added a reset to this circuit so that at power up you can toggle a pin or a piece of logic can reset this, this logic. So if we start digging down into the Verilog, we say if reset equals zero, that means that that pin or that signal has gone to zero, reset these two flip-flops, meta1 and meta2, to zero. All right. Oh, I didn't get it in there. Okay, so if, and then this else, end else begin is the beginning of every clocked process. So every time the clock happens that's not being reset, it's going to evaluate everything down into this underneath here. I have a counter that's free running elsewhere in the design, so this is counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, sorry about that. And what happens is button gets, about, uh, gets transferred into this flip-flop. So once every fourth um, count gets moved into this flip-flop, and then meta 1 whatever its value is, gets moved into the next one. So it gets, this is a shift register is what I just generated. So it gets shifted through. So if a one goes here on the button, in the next clock cycle it'll be here. 
And on the next clock cycle, it gets moved to here. And that's how you generate. Oh, and remember the AND gate that I talked about? This is the AND gate. So this is the symbol for AND. Uh, and here's my debounced signal out. So meta 1 and meta 2, when they're both 1, put that signal to 1. OK. That's it, guys. You can now debounce inputs and do edge detection and count things and trigger things. So it's very useful. Able to make with the Blue Man Group's new product, the Moneymaker 12. <laughs> it's better than sound. It's, you bought it by the pound. It's better than, it's the sound you buy by the pound. <laughs>